Ice Age, footprints of humans hunting giant ground sloths, woolly mammoth remains being used for gene sequencing, and human bones discovered alongside prehistoric beasts. These are forbidden Ice Age secrets, prehistoric discoveries that could rewrite history. In 2006, scientists made an extraordinary discovery at White Sands National Park in New Mexico. While walking along the park's gypsum dunes, they noticed these dark spots in the ground that looked like footprints. Not all that incredible on its own, but these were not just footprints. They actually turned out to be fossilized tracks left behind by animals and humans during the Ice Age. Over the next few years, there were excavations, and they found that there were animal footprints from animals like Harlan's ground sloth, which were these massive 10-foot sloths that weighed over a ton. They also found dire wolf prints, which were a species of large prehistoric canine. And then there were the human footprints. They were found in layers of sediment that had been preserved for thousands of years. And what's really cool is that this meant humans had been in North America much earlier than we previously thought. Radiocarbon dating showed that the human tracks were at least 22,000 years old. Before this, the belief was that humans only arrived about 13,000 to 16,000 years ago. In 2018, researchers discovered a set of footprints from a woman walking with a child. The tracks show her walking for almost a mile, occasionally carrying the youngster and then setting them down as they went. And there were other amazing prints as well. One set showed what looked like humans having stalked a giant sloth. It's just cool that they were able to form such specific scenes out of these prints helps us imagine what their daily lives might have been like. Just last year, a baby woolly mammoth named Yana was discovered in Siberia. This mammoth had been frozen in permafrost for 50,000 years, and her remains are the best preserved mammoth ever found. Yana was only about six months old when she died, and the preservation is incredible. Parts of her fur, skin, and trunk are still intact, and that's because the permafrost in Siberia acts like a giant freezer, preserving animals and plants that have been trapped in the ice even for thousands and thousands of years. And in more recent years, as more and more ice has been melting, discoveries like Yana are happening more often. What makes Yana so important though is that studying her can tell us a lot about how mammoths lived. They're able to learn about the cold environment she lived in based on her skin and fur and, and her age means she most likely depended on her mother and other herd members to survive. A lot of mammoth remains are damaged or they're just incomplete, but Yana is giving scientists a chance to study a young mammoth in a lot more detail. Also in 2024, scientists made a huge breakthrough when they sequenced the genome of another woolly mammoth found in Siberia. This one had been frozen for 52,000 years. By sequencing the genome, they were able to form this kind of map of the mammoth's genetic makeup. And this is important because it opens the door to understanding the biology of woolly mammoths in a way that's never been possible before. The mammoth's DNA reveals a lot about how these ancient creatures were built, how they adapted to life in the freezing cold. For example, scientists can now see how the woolly mammoth's fur and fat layers were genetically programmed to survive the cold. And even crazier, this could help in de-extincting the woolly mammoth, basically using its DNA to bring it back. Scientists are trying to use the genetic code to potentially create woolly mammoths through things like cloning or genetic engineering. Yeah, this is actually becoming a real possibility now. Being able to study the mammoth's genome is also helping scientists learn more about how mammoths went extinct. By comparing mammoth DNA to modern elephants, researchers can track the genetic changes that happened over thousands of years and figure out why the furry guys disappeared. Next up is the discovery of Kennewick Man in 1996, a set of human remains found along the Columbia River in Washington. The remains were estimated to be over 9,000 years old. At first, they thought the remains came from a member of a Native American tribe. There was a huge debate at the time. Native American tribes immediately claimed they were the bones of their ancestors and wanted them to be returned so they could bury them properly. On the other hand, scientists wanted to study the remains to learn more about early human migration. Well, in the end, the remains were studied further and there were some fascinating findings. Genetic tests revealed that Kennewick man's DNA was actually most closely related to people from the Pacific Rim, especially Japan. This was a bit of a curveball. The traditional theory was that the first settlers of the Americas came from Siberia across the Bering Land Bridge. Now it looked 
like they might have come from a completely different area. In 1916, a pretty controversial discovery was made in Vero Beach, Florida. Human bones were found buried alongside the remains of massive Ice Age animals like mastodons and mammoths. You can only imagine how blown away people would have been back in the day learning about this. The fact that human bones were mixed in with fossils of giant creatures painted this very wild picture. And the fact that humans were living alongside these ancient prehistoric beasts. The bones were radiocarbon dated to around 14,000 years old, which pushed the timeline of human arrival in the Americas back further than most experts were thinking at the time. And some people were pretty skeptical. Was this an authentic find or was it a hoax? Well, with the advancement of new testing techniques, it was later confirmed that the remains were indeed human. The discovery became a huge piece of evidence that humans lived at the same time as giant animals, much earlier than people thought, which only opened up other theories about how ancient humans spread across the continent. In Canada's Yukon, scientists have made some pretty amazing discoveries. Woolly mammoth and bison perfectly preserved in permafrost. Just like in Siberia, the icy ground here keeps animals remains in pretty amazing condition. The preservation gives researchers this rare look at how these animals lived during the Ice Age. But it's not just mammoths and bison that have been found. The permafrost has also preserved prehistoric plants, insects, and parasites. The fact that these remains are so well preserved gives clues about what these creatures ate, how they behaved. For example, researchers could examine the mammoth's teeth and stomach contents to learn more about what they ate. In Egypt's Sahara Desert, there's a place called the Cave of Swimmers, famous for its ancient paintings. What's weird is a bunch of these images show what looks a lot like people swimming, which is strange because the Sahara is of course this dry, arid desert now, but it wasn't always that way. The paintings are believed to be about 10,000 years old, long before the Sahara became the desert that we know today. Back then, the area was much greener, with lakes, rivers, and plenty of plants, so plenty of wildlife could have lived there, including humans. The Cave of Swimmers tells us the Sahara's climate used to be much wetter, and it's kind of the bridge between the lush stretch of land it used to be and the desert we see now. The early humans who painted in these caves were likely some of the first to adapt to the changing environment. It's possible they may have even seen how things were changing and wanted to document their daily lives, leave something behind so that future generations would know what it was like before. But that's just my theory. In 2002, scientists made an incredible discovery at Blumbo's cave in South Africa. They found some of the oldest known artwork in the world, pieces of ochre carved with intricate patterns that were around 75,000 years old. That is a very long time ago. So long ago that it completely changed our understanding of when humans first started to show signs of more modern behavior, like creating art. Along with the carvings, the cave also showed evidence of early tools and jewelry, objects that hint at this much more sophisticated, complex culture than we would have pictured for the time. Turns out, these early humans were capable of symbolic thinking. They were forming social structures and using creativity in ways we just hadn't expected. Basically, we thought that they were just really dumb. The extinction of Ice Age animals like mammoths, saber-toothed cats, and giant sloths has always been a tricky topic. Some scientists think humans hunted these animals to extinction. Others say climate change is to blame, but recent discoveries are giving us a more clear picture. In 2020, a study of Ice Age bones showed that the megafauna were wiped out by this mix of human hunting and drastic climate changes. The animals were already struggling because the climate was warming when humans started hunting them, and that combination led to their disappearance in North America and Europe. But the extinction might not have happened all at once. In some places, animals like mammoths stuck around longer than we thought. Some even survived until about 4,000 years ago. For centuries, the native Paiute people of Nevada told stories of giant pale-skinned invaders called the Sitaka. These giants were said to be fierce red-headed warriors who arrived in the region thousands of years before attacking local tribes. The legend says that the tribes eventually teamed up, chased the giants into a cave, and wiped them out. These stories seemed like mere myth until bones started turning up in Lovelock Cave. In 1911, two miners discovered what looked like huge human skeletons in the cave. Some of these skeletons were reportedly between seven and eight feet tall. 
More excavations in 1912 and 1924 unearthed thousands of artifacts, including a giant sandal measuring 15 inches long, which seemed to support the idea that something unusual had happened there. But that wasn't all. A large handprint embedded in the cave's rock was also found, and it was about twice the size of an average human hand. And then in 1931, the Nevada Review, Miner, reported the discovery of two mummified skeletons in a dry lake bed near Lovelock, allegedly measuring between eight and a half and 10 feet tall, covered in red hair. With all that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video. Thank you.